Using RailClone, it's possible to make sophisticated two-dimensional arrays using rule sets that allow you to allocate different geometry segments to each part. The size of a two-dimensional array can be entered manually in scene units for the X and Y dimensions. Alternatively, splines can be used to define paths for both axes. When using curved splines, the segments will be deformed to follow the path, creating single and double curved geometry. In this example, we're going to create a simple curtain wall, as shown in this image here. This style demonstrates the majority of the inputs for the array 2s generator used to construct 2D arrays. Before we get started, let's have a quick look at the scene. There are some simple floor plates set up and we'll create a curtain wall to cover the front and back of these. There are two splines, one along the bottom here to determine the path for the width and one on the left hand side which will govern the height. And to the left of the floor plates we have all the segments we're going to use to construct the array. We've got the bottom segments here, two of those, a transom, the window itself, a top part and then three sides. Also, by unhiding the layers, you can reveal a second building that we'll use later to test the curtain wall style once we've created it. First of all, create a new rail clone object by going to Create, Geometry, I2 Software, Rail Clone Pro, and click and drag anywhere in the viewport. Go to the Modify panel, and from the Style rollout, we're going to create a new style. So click on the Open Style Editor button. This opens a blank style. There are two generators here. There's the linear array, which you can see in the previous tutorial about the masonry wall, or there's the array 2s generator that we're going to use to create the 2D array. Click and drag this into the construction view. Now, as I've mentioned, you could set the width here manually using the X and the Y size, but we're going to use splines. So drag two spline objects into the scene. Name the first one width and the second one height. When you type these in, it updates in the base objects rollout on the right hand side. Labeling just makes it easy to understand the usage when you come to allocate them. So, with that done, let's wire the width into the X spline input and the height into the Y. and let's pick the splines from the scene. So, with the width selected, come down to Property Spline and click where it says None, and pick Baseline from the scene. And then for the height, just pick the curtain wall height. Drag in a new segment object, and segment objects allow us to pick geometry items from the scene to be used as part of the array. In this case, we're going to start with the default input. The default input displays everywhere on the array unless there happens to be another piece of geometry being used because it's plugged into one of these other inputs. So in this case the bulk of the curtain wall is going to be these windows. Come to the segment, come to the properties panel and click on the object picker button and then select windows from the scene and wire this in to the default input slot of the array generator. And you can see immediately it updates in the viewport and our array is starting to work. However, um, it's in point cloud mode at the moment, which is great for fast viewport previewing. But when you're setting up an array, it's helpful to see the full geometry so you can really see how everything fits together. So let's temporarily turn the point cloud off. And in order to maintain viewport performance, we'll just restrict the array to a small part of the baseline so that it updates quickly. So let's do that first. If you come over to the base objects rollout and go back to your width, spline, turn off full length and set the length to something like 5 meters, 500 centimeters in this case. So you can see that this essentially just restri restricts it to a small part of that spline. If we come now down to display on the bottom here and turn it from point cloud to mesh we can see the full geometry. It's not terribly clear that this is a window because the texture on it is uh, solid. So in order to see what's going on a little clearer here, let's put the material on right at the beginning. So hit M to bring up your material editor and there should be a material in the scene called curtain wall. Just drag and drop that onto the new rail clone object. And now it becomes a little clearer. So there we have it. The default segment is tiling quite nicely. And it's filling the full array from top to bottom.
So let's carry on and add the top section which has got a railing on it. Create another segment object. Connect this to the top input slot. Just come over here so we can see it update. So with this new segment selected, come over to the properties, object picker, and then pick the top section, which is called curtain wall top, from the scene. And you see it update. Now there are a couple of issues immediately. Um, this is aligning itself to the baseline from the back of these segments, which is fine, that's what we want it to do, but the windows are much, much shallower than the top section is. So what we need to do is to push these windows forward so that they align to the front of this. Now I've actually set the pivot point of these windows up in such a way that if this were to align to the pivot that would happen. However, Rail Clone is automatically aligning it to the thickness of the geometry, the bounding box of this particular geometry, not the pivot point. So it's an easy fix. Come into Windows, Segment, come down to the Alignment and where it says Z Automatic, just change that to Pivot and you should see it jump forwards. Right, so the other issue we have here is that the, the other issue we have here is that the railings have a kind of bracket that comes down and it should extend over the top of the window element below it. Um, but obviously because of the bounding box going to the extents of this geometry, it's leaving a gap here. So in order to overlap these, the simplest thing to do is to come into transform into the Y settings and just reduce this figure here. And as you bring it down, you can see it overlaps and minus 21.6 is about right. So that overlaps and joins up nicely now, seamlessly, and we've got the brackets extending over onto the window part. So now let's add the bottom part. So let's just get close to the bottom part so we can see what's going on. And then we'll add another segment, and we're going to pick this bottom part here from the scene. So drag in another segment into the construction view, connect this to the bottom, and then pick from the scene this segment here. And you can see it automatically updates, it meets quite nicely, so no, nothing needed to do there, but uh, because it's aligning to the bottom of the spline, it's not lining up with the floor, so this time we want to reduce it down. Now, if I did the same trick with the transform and turned it down on the Y, it leaves the rest of the wall behind, so that's not what we want. What we want to do instead is to go into general and change the bottom padding. And when you change the padding, the adjacent segments move with it. So if I change this to minus uh, about 1.3 meters, I believe, just drag it down, and you can see the windows are updating too. Oops. Yeah, minus 1.3, 130 centimeters. You can see it lines up quite nicely. So just by pulling that down, we've lined it up with that floor, and then top here that, that that's lining up too, and we've got this long expanse of window in between. We've now got the bottom working well, but this bottom geometry has got lights on it on every single um, on every single instance. What we'd like is for this to only appear every six times. So what we can do is pick this other version of the bottom which has no lights from the scene. So create a new segment. Click on Object None and pick it from the scene. And to combine these together into a sequence, use a sequence operator. Just move those over. And first of all, we'll take the original segment with the lights and connect that to the sequence operator. And then this opens up a new empty node slot and we'll connect the second one without the lights to that and then we'll connect the whole sequence into the bottom slot. And now what you'll get is an alternating pattern of lights, no lights, lights, no lights, and also notice that it's jumped up because I haven't yet changed the bottom padding for this segment. So let's just make this a minus 132 and that comes down to the same level. So I've got alternating uh, bottom panels now. But I want, say, four or five of this one before I get another set of lights. So the way to do that is to click on the sequence node. Each one of these has a count that governs the number of times it appears before it moves on to the next segment or loops back to the beginning if it reaches the end. 
So in this case, we want to turn this up. So you see if I turn it up to two, I've got two spaces, three, three, and so on. We want it set to five in this case. So now that finishes the bottom. So now what we want are evenly spaced transoms to line up with these floor plates. So add another segment, connect it this time to X evenly, and pick the transom from the scene, which is this one here, curtain wall transom. Now you can go, that's added them into the scene, um, but too regularly, I think they're about every meter probably by the looks of it. We want them every three meters, these floors are at three meter intervals. And the way to change it is to come to the array itself, go to the rules in the properties panel, and the Y evenly settings are at the bottom here. You can see the distance is what governs the space between them. So we want to set this to about three meters, which will be 300 centimeters. And you can see it doesn't line up. And part of the reason for that is because justify is turned on, which tries to equal out the start and the end gaps. If you turn this off, it starts counting an exact three meters from the beginning and keeps going and then sort of ignores whatever size is left at the end. Most of what's happening is that a new transom is created when this gap is 50% of the distance. So it's creating a new one up here, which is not really what we want because it's appearing just below our uh, top section. So if we change this to 100%, a new transom will only appear now once it is exactly 300 centimeters, which gets rid of that. We also need to turn off extent to side. We're not going to see a difference here right now, but when we add the sides here, we don't want the transoms to cut through them right to the edge. We want the sides here to continue on past. So turning off extent to side will make sure that, that happens. So now we're getting the beginnings of a nice curtain wall. We have a top with a railing. We've got a bottom there with sort of vents and lights that repeat every sixth um, segment. And we've got transoms and windows in between. So we'll finish this off now by just adding some sides. So again, create a new segment. From the scene, pick this little piece here, curtain wall sides. And we want to wire this one into the left and the right side. Left side and the right side. So like the others, you can see it's pushed too far back at the moment. So at the back of the wall, because the bounding box is te detecting the physical uh, dimensions of this geometry, what we want to use is the pivot that I've already set up. So again, uh, click on the curtain wall sides, come to alignment Z and make sure pivot is selected. That pushes that forward. And that's all working rather nicely, except at the bottom and probably the top, things are not going quite so well. And that's because these segments were completely different height. Whereas this, the transom and the window parts are multiples of the same height. So in order to do that, we need to add some custom segments for the top and the bottom. So we'll have a top side segment and we'll have a bottom side segment. You can see we've got some sides here, which are exactly the same size as the height as the bottom and the top. So we'll do the bottom first. So add a new segment to the scene. Come to the object picker and pick the curtain wall bottom sides and then wire this into the left bottom and right bottom corner. So that's working but of course we haven't changed the padding to move it down to the same level as these segments here so at the moment it's starting on the spline and going upwards and pushing all the geometry above with it. We need to move this down the same distance as we moved these other bottom segments down which was minus 1.3 or minus 130 centimeters and that pulls that down and fixes it and that's that done and the other side will be the same then if we come to the top and do the same thing so add a new segment to wire this into left top and right top and then pick the top segment from the scene which is up here So this one is another slender one. It needs to come forwards a little bit, so we need to change the Z alignment to pivot again. Again, the pivot's already set up. 
and now there's a gap and it's because we moved the top section down to overlap and this segment hasn't been moved so it's still leaving the gap where this is moved down so in order to fix that we'll simply move it down on the transform the same distance which is minus 21.6 or if you prefer you can just do it by eye so that completes the curtain wall style let's just close all this down and maximize the viewport if we just turn back on full length we can see it right across the whole building um, you can see the left and the right side working and all the other segments and it's automatically adjusting itself to follow the curvature of this spline it's also possible to curve the spline using the height as well if I just take this segment and divide it set it to smooth it's probably going to be a bit slow in the viewports but if I pull this out to the left hand side you can see that I can create some rather interesting double curved geometry and let's look at this in another context do um, if we unhide that building we mentioned earlier you can see there's a green spline there that we can use ready so let's just pick the rail clone object again come into your base objects we'll leave the height as it is but pick the width base object and we'll just change the spline to this one here so just click on baseline and click on this new spline here which is called crescent baseline there's a camera in the scene so if you just hit C to choose the camera and render now you should get uh, a f good, good idea of what this looks like just one last thing, if you do find that you're using curved splines and the deformation isn't very smooth, it could be to do with the interpolation of the space spline you're using. It's possible to override that in the rail clone object by going to style uh, under geometry and curve steps here changes the interpolation of that spline. So we can change this to say 50. Let it think about it for a minute. And you get a much smoother bend. So having completed this tutorial, you should have a good understanding of the main input slots of the A2S generator and how they relate to the finished array. You should also be able to overlap segments using fixed transformations. You should be able to move segments using padding and create sequences. For more information about every aspect of RailClone's features, please see our reference section or visit the tutorials page for more advanced videos.